Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Thursday, February 16. I am Abigail Smythe. Among the stories in this evening's newscast, no charges to be brought against Prime Minister Andrew Holness for alleged conflict of interest breaches. 20-year-old U.S. student accused of torturing his ex-girlfriend slapped with additional charges. Trainee police constable dies during field training. Teenager shot and killed in St. Catherine. Drought conditions affecting water supply systems across the island. In business, gas prices on the rise again. In the region, Barbados signs education emotion you with Cuba. Further overseas, Spain's parliament approves a new legislation to allow people to change their legally registered agenda. And in sports, Jamaica defeated by Spain in Cup of Nations tournament opener. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. The Integrity Commission's Director of Prosecution has ruled that no charges will be brought against Prime Minister Andrew Holness for alleged conflict of interest breaches. According to the Director of Corruption Prosecution, though sufficient evidence has been identified to mount charges for the noted offences, the prosecution would be hard-pressed to resist an abuse of process application with regard to undue delay. The statement says the evidence does not reveal an at-first-view case with a realistic prospect of conviction in relation to the alleged offence. Therefore, no criminal charges are being recommended in respect of this offence. It also says, with additional material being made available, which investigations have failed to contradict or provide more evidence in support of the offences contemplated, no criminal charges can be laid. And Prime Minister Andrew Holness had been implicated in that case of conflict of interest by the Integrity Commission. The Commission referred the report to the Director of Corruption Prosecution after it concluded that the Prime Minister may have influenced the awarding of millions of dollars in government contracts to the company of a business associate. The recommendation was made in a 107-page report which contains details of an investigation into the award of government contracts to West and Construction Limited between 2006 and 2009. Prime Minister Andrew Holness had rebuffed allegations of wrongdoing in the awarding of millions of dollars in government contracts to the company of a business associate. He said, quote, I strongly reject any suggestion or insinuation of wrongdoing and I will do all in my power to ensure that the truth is known, end quote. He also noted that he had referred the matter to his lawyers. And in the meantime, the opposition People's National Party, PNP, had called for Prime Minister Andrew Holness to step aside as the Director of Corruption Prosecution prepared to rule on the conflict of interest allegations against him. PNP President Mark Golding said the image of the country has been undermined in the international community and among Jamaica's key development partners. He added that the allegations are an embarrassment for the people of Jamaica. This is a very serious matter. The Prime Minister is the head of government of our country. Arising out of a thorough investigation by the institution that has been established to investigate and prosecute matters relating to corruption, which is the Integrity Commission, they have referred him for possible prosecution to the Director of Corruption Prosecutions. It's unprecedented. This has never happened before. It is understood that two claims have been filed in the Supreme Court on behalf of Welgen Limited, the company associated with Sprint world record holder Usain Bolt. The claims are in relation to the fraud uncovered at investment firm Stocks and Securities Limited SSL. Bolt reported that he was fleeced of more than 12 million US dollars in the scam. His attorney, Linton Gordon, says an order has been made in one of the claims but gave no further details. Following the expiration of a 10 day ultimatum for the return of his client's funds in January, Mr. Gordon told the media that he met with temporary manager of SSL, Kenneth Tomlinson. At the time, Mr. Gordon acknowledged that the Olympian may have to file a lawsuit 
in a bid to recover the missing funds. In the meantime, charges could be laid soon against the Jean Ann Panton, the former wealth advisor at Stocks and Securities Limited, who has been implicated in the fraud. Ms. Panton was questioned for several hours for the second straight day, Wednesday, by fraud squad detectives and officers from the Financial Investigations Division. More than two billion Jamaican dollars is alleged to have been stolen from the accounts of 40 investors, including Usain Bolt, at SSL over a 12-year period. The 20-year-old University of the West Indies U.S. student, Matthew Hyde, who is accused of locking his ex-girlfriend in his dorm room and torturing her with a clothing iron, has been hit with three additional charges. Hyde has now been charged with false imprisonment, malicious communication, and assault occasioning bodily harm. Hyde of Bremer Avenue, Kingston 5, was previously charged with assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. Hyde was remanded when he appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court Thursday morning and has been ordered to return to court on March 9. The police believe the 19-year-old woman was held captive for at least three days in Hyde's room at the George Allen Hall, during which she was tortured with a clothing iron and other instruments. She was discovered sometime after 10 p.m on February 9. Police investigations have suggested that the victim was accused by Hyde of infidelity on the day before he locked her away in his room. A trainee police constable died Wednesday evening during field training at the National Police College of Jamaica in Twickenham Park, St. Catherine. He is Tishon Brown. It is reported that Mr. Brown was running when he fell and hit his head. Sources say it took almost 10 minutes for members of the medical services branch to arrive to offer assistance. He reportedly died while on the way to hospital. It is suspected that he may have suffered an asthma attack. A 19-year-old resident of Laburnum Crescent, Portsmouth, St. Catherine, was shot and killed Wednesday night. The deceased has been identified as Tyrese Duhar, otherwise called African. According to reports, about 8.30 p.m., Duhar was standing on the road conversing with others when a silver Toyota Fielder motor car drove up. Shots were fired from the vehicle, hitting Duhar repeatedly. He was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. The Waterford Police in Portmore, St. Catherine, are investigating. A joint operation by members of the Jamaica Defense Force and the Jamaica Constabulary Force in Great Bay, St. Elizabeth, led to the seizure of four firearms Thursday morning. The interoperability among various land, air, and maritime elements led the security forces to the interception of a Drugs for Guns criminal syndicate trading marijuana for illegal weapons and ammunition between Jamaica and Haiti. The operation has so far resulted in the seizure of four firearms, including a shotgun, 70 rounds of ammunition, and four magazines. The St. Elizabeth police have launched a probe after two men who residents believed to be car thieves were chopped and beaten in Newmarket in the parish. Pictures and videos of the incident, which occurred over the weekend, have gone viral on social media. In the videos, the residents accused the men of being car thieves, chopped, tied and beat them and then set their car on fire. The men were rescued by police. The men were seen with chop wounds in the video. One had his hand broken and a rope tied around his neck. The other man's foot appeared to be broken as he could not stand. They were placed in the back of a police service vehicle and taken to hospital. However, Police investigations have discovered that the men who lived in a nearby district were in fact not car thieves. The police say the men were driving through the community when they got a flat tire and sought help. The police say the car the men were driving was not stolen. As a result, the police have launched a probe into the injuring of the two men with the aim of arresting the attackers. The condition of the injured men have not yet been ascertained. The National Water Commission, NWC, is reporting that many of its water supply systems in several parishes are being impacted by drought conditions now affecting sections of the island. 
The public is being urged to brace for possible disruptions in water supply, including lower water pressures, adjustments in the current water supply regulations, and no water conditions in the areas that are worst affected. Additionally, people are being urged to implement conservation methods to safeguard the limited supply. The NWC says despite intermittent showers in some areas, the water inflows at two of its largest facilities, the Mona Reservoir and the Hermitage Dam, and several rural parish systems are declining. Similarly, Western-based systems such as the Logwood Treatment Plant in Hanover are experiencing a shortfall in its operational capacity. The NWC notes that the December 2022 report from the Meteorological Service of Jamaica shows that all parishes experienced rainfall levels below their respective 30-year average, with Kingston and St. Andrew recording a mere 5% of its average rainfall. Additionally, seven of these parishes are classified as having meteorological drought conditions. As such, the NWC says while water levels in storage facilities and in rivers could continue to decline, water management plans, including conservation, should be continued. In business news, motorists are now paying more for gas when they go to the pumps. The state-owned oil refinery Petrojam says Eaton 87 is up by $3.06 to sell for $170.47 per liter. A liter of E1090 is up by $3.06 to sell for $174.45. Automotive diesel oil is up by 19 cents to sell for $206.03. Ultra low sulfur diesel, $216.77 per liter, following an increase of 25 cents. Kerosene is up by 25 cents, selling for $214.55. In the meantime, propane cooking gas is up by 71 cents per liter to sell for $71.57, while butane is up by $3.06 to sell for $80 per liter. In the region, Barbados has signed an Education Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, with Cuba. The MOU provides two scholarships per year for five years to Cuban nationals and provides training in English as a foreign language for Cuban experts. The signing of the MOU also provides Barbadians with the opportunity to strengthen their capacity for second language acquisition by teaching Spanish as a modern language. There will be a practical exchange of teachers between Cuba and Barbados with an emphasis on English language teachers as well as a secondary level teacher training for students aged 11 to 14. And on the international scene, Spain's parliament has approved new legislation that will allow anyone over 16 to change their legally registered gender. The Spanish Parliament has also voted to ease abortion limits for those aged 16 and 17 and make the country the first in Europe to introduce paid menstrual leave. The new transgender law, which was passed despite protests from feminist groups, warnings from opposition parties, and amid tension between different wings of the socialist-led coalition government, means anyone aged over 16 will be able to change their gender on official documents with Without medical supervision. However, a judge will need to authorize the change for minors between ages 12 and 14, while those between 14 and 16 will need the consent of their parents or guardians. No such changes will be available for those under the age of 12. And in sports news, Jamaica were defeated 3-0 by Spain in their Cup of Nations tournament opener Thursday morning in Gosford, Australia. Jamaica's next game will be against the Czech Republic on Saturday at 10.50 p.m. Jamaica time. The Czech Republic lost 4-0 to hosts Australia in their tournament opener also on Thursday morning. The tournament is being used as preparation for this summer's FIFA Women's World Cup. Barcelona and Manchester United shared a gripping 2 all draw on Thursday as the two European heavyweights traded blows in an intense Europa League playoff first leg. 
Also, Dortmund beat Chelsea 1-0 on Wednesday to leave its big spending British opponents' Champions League campaign in jeopardy after the first leg of their last 16 meeting. And in the Premier League, Manchester City earned a crucial 3-1 win against title rivals Arsenal as the resurgent champions knocked the Gunners off the top of the league on Wednesday. Pep Guardiola's side showed they are not ready to surrender the title with a ruthless display of finishing that lifted them above Arsenal on goal difference. And that's it for your news roundup for today. I am Abigail Smythe. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey yo, yellow! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!